Dual Monsters time. Our first Dual Monsters archetype, and it's quite the famous one. It's the Blue Eyes archetype. I I, I said in my previous Infernity uh, review that I'm really excited to do this video because it'll close a very much discussed topic within my circles. I have a friend who claims that the Blue Eyes archetype is the best archetype that there is. That is not true. There are far better archetypes than this one. One is, one is going to be reviewed pretty soon. Even the Red Eyes archetype is better than this one. Uh, but back to the topic, they were used in the Dual Monsters anime by their, ma by their main rival. That is the everyone's king of douchebags, Seto Kaiba. Yeah, he used like one or two cards relating to that archetype. Three, I think, max. Four. Yeah, definitely a four card four cards from that archetype and the rest just came out of the blue because I don't know were blue eyes that much popular probably since it was used by the, the main rival of the original series but anyway that's not an excuse to make a somewhat mediocre archetype if you're ever going if you're ever making an archetype around the, one of the original classic series you should make something out of it. Blue, uh, Red Eyes did a gr great job, what's stopping the Blue Eyes from getting a far better job? Which we'll see now. Alright, let's jump, in, uh, jump into the train of wonders of this archetype and see with their first monster, the monster that, that, that it's entirely based on, and the legendary Blue Eyes White Dragon, a level 8 vanilla monster. Yes, I am really allergic when I see an archetype is based around the vanilla monster since in the modern day you're not supposed to be stuffing your deck with vanilla monsters. But Psyframes proved me wrong on that one. They are extremely a uh, force to be reckoned with. Uh, even Genex can pull out some decent plays. I, I've watched War of the Worthless so I know what I'm talking about. Neos is mediocre at best, but yeah, this one is also better than Neos, I would say. Uh, it's a level 8 beater with 3000 attack. Uh, what else can I say? They're almost, almost all of them are light monsters, so I guess they're fuel for Ally of Justice, so they can beat upon them. I don't know. But anyway, this is, this, this is their main kind of like a playmaker, since everything revolves around it in the first wave of support. So let's actually check out what's, uh, what they have in store next with their first actual support card, that being the White Stone of Legend. It's a Dragon Tuner monster, a level 1, and if this card is sent to the graveyard, add one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your deck to your hand. So yeah, this is actually an excellent target for cards of consonants and 1 for 1, uh, since when it's, it, when is it sent to the graveyard, it searches out a Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is their primary pro playmaker. And it allows you for easy draw power when used with cards of consonants. However, it is entirely outclassed by their next support card, that being the White Stone of Ancients. It has the same level, attribute, and type, and it has double the stats. And once per turn during the end phase, if this card is sent to the graveyard, is in the graveyard because it was sent there this turn, you can special summon one Blue Eyes monster from your deck. You can banish this card from your graveyard and target one Blue Eyes monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use this effect of Blue White Stone of Ancients once per turn. Yeah, you can clearly see it's better since it searches out any Blue Eyes monster, that, mean, that meaning it can search the Retrain, which is far better than the original, since it has an effect and all. And yeah, it is. Uh, it has a strict once per turn because of that effect, but it's worth running more than the regular White Stone of Legend. Definitely run this one, I tell you. Now the next monster is Maiden with the Eyes of Blue. A spellcaster tuner monster with zero attack and defense, level 1. And when this card is targeted for an attack, you can negate the attack, and if you do, change the battle position of this card. Then you can special summon one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is acted at the target of this card, you, on this face-up card you can special summon one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand, deck, or graveyard. You can only use one, one Maiden of the Eyes of Blue effect once per turn, and only once that turn. So, yeah, this is one of their best tuner monsters. I say always run 3 because it has some nice protection for this archetype. 
However, I would advise battle protection since the, no one in their right mind is going to use targeting protection to get, a and get over a level 1 tuner with 0 attack and defense. But however, it is a bit not that good since it only summons the regular Blue Eyes White Dragon, not the Ray Train. Uh, later tuners make that way better in, in that aspect. But it's still worth running a 3 because of the decent protection. Alright, next monster is Master with the Eyes of Blue. Same stats, same type, and this effect. When this card is normal summon, you can target one level, uh, level 1 light tuner monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can shuffle this card from your graveyard into the deck, then target one effect monster you control, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one blue eyes monster from your graveyard, other than the sent monster. You can only use the effect of Master with the Eyes of Blue once per turn. This is probably their worst tuner monster since it requires way too much setup. But when you actually realize it, if, you, if they open up really badly, they'll probably have some blue eyes monsters in the graveyard. It is better because it searches out any blue eyes monster, meaning they can search out their retrain, which we'll get into later. So yeah, I would say run at 1 if you feel like it, maybe 2 if you're feeling dangerous. But yeah. And their next monster is Priestess with the Eyes of Blue. Has same stats, uh, same type, everything the same, level 1 tuner. And it, this effect, during either player's turn, when a card or effect is active that targets this face-up card, you can send one effect monster you control to the graveyard, and if you do, add up to two blue eyes monsters with different names from your uh, deck to your hand. If this card is in your graveyard, you can target one blue eyes monster you control, shuffle it into the deck, and if you do, special summon this card. You can only use one priestess with the eyes of blue effect per turn, and only once per that turn. Never mind, this is their worst tuner monster. It's shame, because this art is just so majestic. But yeah, if you ever, ever consider erring to run this, run it for the first effect because it actually searches two monsters out. However, they have a spell card that does the job faster and more efficiently than this. I would say... No, actually, don't consider running it. It's my advice to you. You're getting rid of your primary playmaker for the second effect in order to re-summon re this card. For like, I don't know, direct attack prevention. Why would you get rid of a huge beater just to be, uh, bring out a measly tuner from the graveyard? I I don't know. They, uh, sometimes they make a decent card and sometimes they make a, a piece of garbage like this. And sometimes they make a really nice card. That, and that is what, exactly what the next card is. That is Protector with the Eyes of Blue. It's also a spellcaster, tuner, level 1, light. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level white, uh, one light mon tuner monster from your hand. You can target one effect monster you control, send it to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one blue eyes monster from your hand. You can only use this effect of protector of the eyes of blue ones per turn. With the right setup, it can the effect can say when this card is summoned, special summon a blue eyes monster and go into your synchro monster. It searches out any blue eyes monster, which is awesome, even the retrain. But, yeah, it requires some setup, and but it's still advisable to run at least two of them, because it's one of their best tuner monsters there are. With a level 1 with 1300 defense is actually a really nice if you're setting it. But, yeah, uh, that is pretty much it, uh, what I have to say about this. Their next monster is Sage with the Eyes of Blue. Uh, when this card is normal summoned, you can add one level 1 light tuner monster from your deck to your hand, except Sage with the Eyes of Blue. You can discard this card to target one effect monster you control, Send it to the graveyard, and if you do, special summon one blue eyes monster from your deck. You can only use this uh, the effect of Sage with the Eyes of Blue once per turn. The only good thing about this card is, of course, searching more tuner monsters. Well, he can't search himself. That's a sh uh, that's a bummer. Um, well, yeah, if you have two at least two effect monsters, if you have at least one effect monster, you can actually go into their synchros, but it's a bit too specific for that. But the searching is good, it's actually splashable in Buster Blader builds, which is a counter to this archetype. So it is often to, uh, often to see, uh, see him to run at 2 in Buster Blader builds, 1 in this build, because... Or maybe 3, I don't know. It, it, it is a searcher after all, and it searches level 1 tuner, since 1 of 4 1 is limited. Yeah, it can make some uh, nice pulls from your deck. Uh, run at 1, maybe 2. 
however you want to feel like uh, however you feel like it all right next up is kind of a, an indirect support but the theming since the sage with the eyes of blue is in, on the picture well it's rider of the storm winds also has the same stats target for one for one and cards of consonants even and you can target one dragon type normal monster you control equip the monster from your equip this monster from your hand or, to, or the field to that target if a monster equipped with this card attacks a defense position monster inflict piercing damage to your opponent if a monster equipped with this card would be destroyed destroy this card well the giving the blue eyes ability to inflict piercing damage is nice since they uh, mo mostly str uh, struggle with getting uh, getting over something when it's when it's in defense mode, uh, and this is actually some nice protection. For if it has uh, it has some cyber dark protection, that is actually a cyber dark protection destroying the equipped monster instead. However, hmm, it can be a bit cloggy at times if you don't need it. So run at one max. All right, their next monster is I don't know what to say about this one. Oh my, god, oh my god, it's Kaiba Man. This monster, it's a level 3 monster, a warrior type monster with 200 attack and 700 uh, defense. And you can tribute this card to special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand. Oh yeah, I get to exchange a weak monster for my primary playmaker and it requires too much setup. Red Eyes Arctap has the same card of the same caliber, but uh, does the do job 10 times better and has the same stats. Wanna see here something funny though? Its OCG name is Ally of Justice Kaiba Man. A light monster. And it has the Ally of Justice in its name. What was Konami thinking? Never a look never turn back and never look back at this again. I'm sorry, it's just that bad. There and here we are. Finally we get to talk about the retrain. He's big, he's white, he's blue, he is the blue eyes alternative white dragon. And cannot be normal summon set, must first be special summoned from your hand by revealing one blue eyes white dragon in your hand. You can only special summon a blue eyes alternative white dragon once per turn this way. This card's name becomes blue eyes white dragon while it is on the field or in the graveyard. Once per turn you can target one monster your opponent controls, destroy it, and this card cannot attack the, the turn this effect is activated. This is actually a really nice effect. A really nice special summoning condition since the cost is kind of non-existent since it only uh, requires you to reveal the monster, not discard it or anything. And it has a nice removal for the time. However, most uh, cards these days have, have a protection against uh, targeting. But yeah, this is actually a really nice effect. I say run 3 at all times, since it gains the blue eyes white dragon name when it's on the field or in the graveyard. So yeah, nothing else to pretty much to say about this. Moving on to their next monster, and that is Dragon Spirit of White. This card is always treated as a blue eyes card. Yeah, so it, you can pull it with their tuner monsters if you have the right ones on the field. Uh, this card can, is, uh, is treated as a normal monster roll in your hand or graveyard. When this card is normal or special summoned, you can target one spell or trap your opponent controls, banish it. During either player's turn, if your opponent controls a monster, you can tribute this card, special summon one blue eyes white dragon from your hand. Well, a quick exchange for their bigger beater and the primary playmaker is kind of neato, but it again, it requires you to have it in the hand. If it was kind of, kind of like one of their ritual monsters, it would be a much nicer addition. And I have, I have this, uh, this effect of banishing a spell card is actually a really nice one since the graveyard has turned into a second hand. Uh, run it once, since it can get a, a bit cloggy at times. Alright, their next monster is... Haha, <laughs> the old classic one. Oh boy, it's Blue Eyes Shining Dragon. A level 10 with 3,500 uh, attack. And cannot be normal summoned or set, and must be special summoned by tributing one Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. And cannot be special summoned by other ways. This card gains 300 attack for each dragon type monster in your graveyard during either player's turn. When a card or effect is activated that targets this card, except during the damage step, step you can negate the other, that effect. Mind you, this isn't once per turn. Okay, I have never seen a much more specific summoning condition except, you know, that great moth. But yeah, this is so too way specific in order to be considered good to be running. 
This is just, yeah, I know it's some uh, monster that appeared in the first Yu-Gi-Oh! movie, Pyramid of Light, but that doesn't give it an excuse to have an, to have an awful effect like this. It has a protection against targeting, but uh, any non-targeting removal, such as Dark Hole or Torrential Tribute, takes care of this instantly. To add to this, it, um, it has no any uh, specific uh, use, on, uh, because it has no specific use other than being a big stupid beater. Want to hear some another thing that is funny? This card came out in 2004 when the movie came out in the theaters, and the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon, which is their later fusion monster, which we'll take a look at later, came out in 2006. So he was unsummonable for two years. However, it has a retrain, believe it or not, and that is our next monster. Well, it isn't a the indirect. Uh, it isn't a direct uh, retrain, but it uh, has a theme like this one. So yeah, it is Deep Eyes White Dragon. You can see it resembles it uh, really, really alike. It's also a level 10 with zero attack and zero defense. And when a face-up Blue Eyes monster control is destroyed by battle or an opponent's card effect, and you have a dragon type monster in your graveyard, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if you do, inflict 600 damage to your opponent for each dragon type monster with different names in your graveyard. If this card is normal or special summon, target one dragon type monster in your graveyard. This card's attack becomes equal to that monster's attack. If this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, destroy all monsters your opponent controls. Okay, the burn effect is out of place because mo all the all the monsters have a, the effect. This uh, this card is treated as a blue eyes monster, so. It is not gonna be with different names. All of them have the effect of this card is treated as a blue eyes white dragon. Uh, it kind of it kind of serves like an archetypal mech lord, a really bad one. Well, actually, it can save you from a pickle if you have it in your hand at the time when your blue eyes monster is destroyed. However, the really the real kicker is the effect destruction eff effect. Uh, yeah, you can destroy all monsters your opponent controls, so it's kind of, so it's a better version of Star of Venom, if I ever saw one. And yeah, and the attack, attack boost is irrelevant since your graveyard is probably mostly gonna be filled like, um, filled with 3000 attack beaters. So, unless you target a fusion monster, which is not gonna be in the graveyard that much often, this card is mostly gonna be a 3000 beater, nothing else. Their last, uh, the last of their monsters are their two ritual monsters. Their first one is Paladin of White Dragon, a level 4 light monster dragon type, and it says you can ritual summon this card with White Dragon Ritual. At the start of the damage step, if this card attacks a face down defense position monster, destroy that face down monster, and then you can tribute this card, special summon one Blue Eyes White Dragon from your hand or deck, but Blue Eyes White Dragons cannot attack for the rest of this turn. Uh, it, yeah, it's another alternative way to search out your Blue Eyes White Dragons, however, it only applies to the original Blue Eyes White Dragon, not the retrain. So yeah, it's kind of useless at that point. But the real, but I really like the effect where it instantly destroys face down and defense position monsters. However, it has a 1900 attack body and it, it can be removed easily by any other means such as bottomless trap hole and all that. However, their final monster is Blue Eyes Chaos Max Dragon, a level 8 ritual monster, a dark monster for some for whatever reason, even though all of them are light monsters. And you can ritual summon this card with chaos form, must be ritual summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways, cannot be targeted or destroyed by your opponent's card effects. If this card attacks a defense position monster, inflict double piercing damage to your opponent. Yeah, this is their only piercing damage dealing effect, except Rider of the Storm wins. It has a 4000 attack body, it has a zero attack uh, defense body, has, so basically it has the same stats as Rainbow Dragon. Uh, this kind of card is kind of a waste of potential, at least to me, because, Blue Eye, uh, because the Red Eyes Arctic has the same... Uh, has the same theming about the ritual monster, but far better, and I'll explain that in the video where I do talk about red eyes. However, the protection on this one is kind of decent. You can only get rid of it with battle, or and yeah, it is kind of good. And yeah, that at least they go out. The monster lineup goes out with something decent. All right, now for the spell cards. They're only support. They're only support. They don't have any trap cards. 
and the first two I can easily skip. White Dragon... Ah, we have Fusion Monsters, I forgot. Ah, sorry, sorry. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is the Fusion uh, Monster of the Blue Eyes, of three Blue Eyes White Dragon. It has 4,500 attack and 3,800 defense. It's a vanilla monster, I know, let's move on. Their retrain is the bad Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. Uh, I said it's bad, uh, but bad in a positive way. It also requires Blue Eyes, um, Blue Eyes White Dragons. And at the, at the end of the damage step, if this is the only face-up card you control and this fusion summon card attack, you can send one Blue Eyes Fusion Monster from your extra deck to the graveyard. This card can attack once again in a row. This card, you can only use the, this effect of Neo Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon up to twice per turn. During either player's turn, when a card or effect is activated that targets a Blue Eyes monster, you would control you can banish this card from your graveyard, negate the activation, and if you do, destroy it. Okay. So yeah, the Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon is still worth running because of this the dumping effect, so you can actually maybe make a target for Deep Eyes. But yeah, they have, they have a spell card that helps out with the attacking, which I'll get into later. Uh, it would be nice if the if it were if it, if the banishing effect was the prison while it was on the field since yeah it, but actually yeah so it's good for what it's supposed to do and it is a straight upgrade over the or the original one it, yeah it would be nice if the banishing effect was present in the while it was on the field since it gives you more variables and more options to do with this thing. If you can't make this, or the previous one, you can always make the twin version, the Blue Eyes Twin Birth Dragon. It's just two Blue Eyes White Dragons, the requirements, and must be either fusion summoned or special summoned by sending the above monsters you control to the graveyard, in, the, in which case you do not use polymerization. Contact fusion, perfect. And you, can, and you cannot special summon, um, uh, and, and cannot be special summoned by other ways. Cannot be destroyed by battle, this card can make up to two attacks uh, on monsters during each battle phase. At the end of the damage step, when this card attacks an opponent's monster, but the opponent's monster was not destroyed by battle, you can banish that, that opponent's monster. This actually is a really nice effect. Uh, since uh, if, you have, if, uh, if the opponent has some monsters that have the effect of cannot be destroyed by battle, well, as a punishment, you can banish them. But yeah, the, the sum, uh, to summon this, it, it's a bit costly since it's cost uh, contact fusion since you can't use polymerization to bring it out. To use polymerization on this thing, it, uh, it would be at least semi-limited on the ban list since it, since, since it could uh, make some nice level plays uh, on, its, uh, on the time of its inception. But yeah, this is actually a really good effect. I'd say definitely run this one. Their, and their next monster are the Synchro Monsters. Wow, how I forgot that they have Synchro Monsters. And that is Azure Eye Silver Dragon, their first Synchro Monster. It, ha it requires one Tuner Monster and one or more non-Tuner Normal Monsters. Figure, since the Blue Eyes is the one Normal Monster. If this card is Special Summon, Dragon-type monster you can control cannot be targeted or destroyed by card effects until the end of your next turn. Once per turn, you can... Uh, once per turn during your standby phase, you can target one normal monster in your graveyard special summon that target. This is actually some nice protection, but sadly it only works for one turn. And the revival effect during the standby phase would be great if they, if, uh, if they could um, fetch any Blue Eyes monster, not their vanilla monster. But yeah, it's still worth running at 3 because of its decent protection for the time. Their next synchro monster is the Blue Eyes Spirit Dragon. It requires one tuner monster plus one or more non-tuner blue eyes monster, so that you can use a retrain for this. Neither player can special summon two or more monsters at the same time. Once per turn, during either player's turn, when an effect or a of a card in the graveyard is activated, you can negate the activation. During either player's turn, you can attribute this synchro summon card and special summon one light dragon type synchro monster from your extra deck in defense position except blue eyes spirit dragon but destroy it during the end phase of this turn okay this one is interesting first of all the first effect shuts down most pendulum decks this uh, this time and day the graveyard negating effect works as a better necro valley well in some aspects and the second effect is actually used to uh, special summon the Azurais. However, it, um, 
it would be nice if, it, if, the, current, if the summon was treated as a synchro summon, meaning that the blue Azurites could survive the turn, it, uh, it gets blown up during the end phase, since uh, it uses its effect uh, to... since its uh, effect is only used when it's synchro summoned. Wow! I would say definitely run this one. Alright, we are done with the monsters, I think. Oh wait, we're not. We have... Oh boy, an Xyz monster! Well, too bad we don't have any Pendulum monsters. Their Xyz monster is Legendary Dragon of White. It requires three level 8 monsters and must be Xyz summoned and cannot be special summoned by other ways. If this card attacks your opponent directly and reduces their life points to zero, while it has Xyz materials attached that were originally Dragon type, you win the match! Alright, where the hell did this come from? I know it was a prize card in, the, in some YCS tournament. But three level 8 monsters with direct attacking or to knock your opponent the life points down to zero just to be a stupid victory dragon? Not worth it. Anyone in their right mind would say Thunder and the Dragon is a far more better choice than this thing. Don't look at it again. I, it's a bit too hard to come by these days and it's just not worth it. It's just bad. Alright, we are done with the monsters finally. Now time for the spell cards. I can sp skip the first two really easily. White Dragon Ritual you use to summon Blue Eyes uh, Paladin of White Dragon. And it has the standard ritual requirements. Chaos Form is used for the uh, Chaos Max Dragon, but you can, use, uh, you can use it to summon Black Luster Soldiers. And you can also banish Dark Magician and Blue Eyes Monsters in order to fill the uh, ritual requirements. So yeah. And their final first actual spell card is Melody of Awakening Dragon. Discard one card and add up to two dragon type monsters with 3000 or more attack and, or, and 2500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. Well, this is a better priestess, I would say. Uh, definitely worth it running at 3 since it searches out anything related to blue eyes. Anything at all, I tell you. So yeah, run three at all times. Also, I, I like how they, how the Lord of D is singing on that Blue Eyes guitar. It's so rad. All right, their next card is Burst Stream of Destruction. If you control a Blue Eyes White Dragon, destroy all your all monsters your opponent controls. Blue Eyes White Dragon cannot attack the turn you activate this uh, this effect. So what is this supposed to be? Some sort of a comeback ability? Maybe. Uh, if it Ha if it said any blue eyes monster, it would be far better, since yeah, the, you're you're basically not going to have blue eyes white dragons any anywhere else to pull to pull them from. Maybe in your graveyard with the later spell card, which we'll get get into later, can fetch him back and you can quickly activate this. But anyway, run it at one if you feel like it. However, it wouldn't be a proper blue eyes, uh, blue eyes archetype if it had, if it is card didn't exist. It's the neutron blast, yay! The same thing as uh, burst stream of destruction, but only for uh, for the blue eyes ultimate dragon. Target one fusion summon blue eyes ultimate dragon. You can uh, control this turn. It can make a second and a third attack during each battle phase. Also, when it attacks, your opponent's cards and effects cannot be activated until the end of the damage step. Well, this is actually a decent effect, but uh, summoning their fusion monsters is harder than it seems. I mean, you can always use fusion conscription, but it, yeah, it's not generally not advised to to be running more more of the more blue eyes white dragons, the the original ones. So if you're if you really feel like it, you can build the deck around this thing, but it's just not worth it. The, the focus more on the, on their synchro monsters, not their fusion monsters. Yeah, I'd say if you feel like it, build a deck around this thing. Their next card is Majesty with the Eyes of Blue, a quick play spell, which which says send one blue eyes monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard and target one face up monster on the field. It cannot attack while it is face up on the field. You can only activate one Majesty with the Eyes of Blue once per turn. So it's a free Foolish Burial, and it works on any Blue Eyes, thank god. And yeah, most of, most of these cards have a protection from targeting, so it's kind of rendered pointless at that point. So you, you, Castell can always spin it back, 
spin back the monster that was um, targeted and then, then it, when it is re-summoned it can just make a reappearance and then it would be pre pretty useless. Red Eyes have the same card of this caliber but it works, it has a somewhat different, different effect but it works better than this thing. However, run it at 3 because you'll be getting your ass handed to you and you can always set up your graveyard for Dragon's Mirror if you're planning to summon uh, Ploy's ultimate dragon. Alright, their next card is their archetype of field spell, Mausoleum of White. During your main phase you can normal summon one level 1 light tuner monster in addition to your normal summon or set. You can only gain this effect once per turn. Once per turn you can target one face up monster your opponent uh, you control, send one normal monster from your hand or deck to your graveyard, and if you do, the targeted monster gains attack and defense equal to the, the level of the monster sent to the graveyard times 100. Until the end of this turn, even if this card leaves the field, you can vanish this card from your graveyard and add one burst stream of destruction from your deck to your graveyard. Double summon effect I like, but that's about as far as it goes. The attack boosting effect is kind of pointless since it only... Uh, since it only boosts by 100 per level, so what is it? 800 if you're sending blue eyes away, um, ten, uh, 1000 if you're sending the deep eyes or shining dragon away, and yeah, you can banish it to g g gain a burst stream of destruction. But however, it's a field spell, it's searchable, and it's uh, advisable to run it at 3 since it has a double summon effect once per turn. Alright, and their final card, oh no, no, the semi-final card, is Beacon of White. If you do not control another Beacon of White and have three or more Blue Eyes monsters in your graveyard, target one of them, special summon it, but it has its effects negated. Also equip it with this card, when this card leaves the field, banish the equipped monster, other monsters you control cannot attack, and if you have any number of Blue Eyes monsters in your graveyard, the equipped monster can attack up to that number of times during each battle phase. So yeah, this is their best way of comeback, I would say. Because you get a big beater that can make multiple attacks and dives to an MST and has its effects negated. Good job! And it banishes when it, when it dives to an MST. I don't know, it's just... It's just not worth it. It's barely searchable, it, it can be search, uh, searched out by... Hit a hit a hit an arsenal or some uh, I think that's what it's called power tool dragon can search it if you can make it in this archetype. But anyway, it's not uh, it's not worth it. It requires a lot of great uh, graveyard setup and it's just it's just bad. All right, and finally their final card is Silver Scry, a quick play spell that allows you to target one dragon type normal monster in your graveyard. Special summon the target. You can only activate this once per turn. A quick play monster reborn is always nice. It would be nicer if it had uh, said any blue eyes monster, not any, not the specifically a normal monster. But yeah, that is, and that is what they have, I guess. Running it too because you're probably running some blue uh, normal normal blue eyes monsters in your deck. All right, we are done, and this felt like a goddamn eternity. All right, time for the grades. Consistency. Well, they have a lot of level 8 and level 1 monsters, they want, some of their, their level 1 monsters are dragon types, so I guess card of consonance, uh, card, card of consonance uh, synergy there. They also have access to trade-in, which is a really nice uh, way to make their, make their draw power going, so yeah, getting to them is not a problem at all. I'm gonna give them a 2 out of 3, because still, it's not any type of high level consistency such as fortune ladies which have insane amounts of draw power as I already said in that video. Now power. Power usually depends on their fusion monster since they're their biggest beaters. But if you build a proper deck around them they can go out really hard and that is a definite 3 out of 3. Now comeback ability, look if they open up really bad you can shut them down really easily and there is not much, uh, not, not much else to blow eyes than their comeback ability, so 1 out of 3 definitely. Protection, that's, that's something they had with Azure Eyes, however it only works on a single turn and we're talking about a single monster which has some specific summoning conditions that require vanilla monsters in order to work. 1 out of 3, Infernities did it better. Huh. And as for the versatilities, uh, their monsters, especially Sage, those tuna monsters are very easily splashable in Buster Blader builds. 
So I'm gonna be generous and give him a 2 out of 3 in versatility. Now, this is uh, this is kind of like what I expected this archetype to be. I didn't expect it to be too good or anything. They have a nice power output, but getting to those monsters is nearly impossible if you build your deck incorrectly. Uh, but anyway, that is pretty much it, what I have, I have to say about this. And next time we'll be looking at the Red Eyes archetype, which is a far more better alter alternative, if you ask me. I would prefer running a Red Eyes deck other than the other than the blue eyes deck in my opinion so anyway that was it and thank you all so much for watching stay tuned for more reads or things and updates comment like and subscribe and as usual i'll upload the next part whenever i can and see you with the red eyes review see you all have a good day and peace